2 Samuel chapter 19, verse 24. And Mithibosheth, the son of Saul, grandson, in the Bible a son can be a grandson, came down to meet the king. David's on his way back to Jerusalem. Victory's been won for David. And had neither dressed his feet nor trimmed, that's the first time that shows up, trimmed his beard, nor washed his clothes from the day the king departed until the day he came again in peace. Now that trim only shows up in another place in the Bible, Matthew 25, verse 7. And it's interesting that it's talking about the virgins trimming their lamps. Um, so we're going to look at Mithibosheth. 2 Samuel 16. Oh, actually, wait a minute. First, 2 Samuel 9. 2 Samuel 9 first. Look at Mithibosheth. We're going to begin. 2 Samuel 9, verse 1. And David said, Is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul, that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? There was of the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. Or Ziba. And when they had called him unto David, the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? Ziba or Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is he. And the king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul, that I may show the kindness of God unto him? That's interest. The kindness of God. And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan has yet a son. Now we read, the son of Saul. Jonathan's the son of is Saul. And the, the man we're going to talk about with Zibosheth is Jonathan's son. And where he's, I, I express that because some place in the Bible, the Bible says son and he's not his son. Well, that would take care of what you would say is that contradiction. Jonathan has yet a son, which is lame on his feet. And the king said unto him, Where is he? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he is in the house of Micar, the son of Emil, in Lodibar. The king then King David sent and fetched him out of the house of Micah, the son of Emil, from Lodabar. Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, the grandchild, it's of the same seed, it's of the same family, was come unto David, he fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth, and he answered, Behold thy servant. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will show thee, show thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake. And will restore thee all the land of Saul thy father. See, not even David said it. That's his grandfather. But your father. If there would not have been a Saul, there would have been no Jonathan. Without a Jonathan, there would have been no Mithibosheth. And Mithibosheth wouldn't be if there was no Saul. And thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant, that thou shouldest look upon a dead dog as I am? Who am I? My father's house is not in the throne no more. You are. My family, the Benjaminites, are no more as far as the kingdom. But Judah... Why are you looking at me? Because of Jonathan. David made an oath to Jonathan that he would take care of his seed. Then the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said unto him, I have given unto thy master's son all that pertains to Saul and all to his house. Though therefore and thy sons, this was Ziba's sons, and thy servants shall till the land for him, Mephibosheth, and thou Ziba shall bring in the fruit. So Ziba is still going to work hard. He's still going to labor. We got to get this point now. What happens with the story? 
But Mephibosheth, the lame boy who can't do nothing, well, he's going to sit at the king's seat. And he's going to dine with the king, and the king's going to take care of him. But Ziba, you're going to work hard in the, in the fields. That thy master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, thy master's son, shall eat bread always at my table. Now Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Then says Zobah unto the king, according to all that my lord the king has commanded his servant, so shall thy servant do. As for Mithibosheth, that's our subject, said the king, he shall eat at my table as one of the king's sons. And go back to chapter 9 when we did that. That's a type of Christian. That's an adoption. So get 2 Samuel 9. And Mithibosheth had a young son whose name was Micah, Micah, and all that dwelt in the house of Ziba were, ser were servants unto Mephibosheth. So Mephibosheth dwelled in Jerusalem. That's where his father was. That's where his grandfather was. For he did eat continually at the king's table and was lame on both his feet. So that, that's the beginning story that we see of Mephibosheth. We're going to move on to 2 Samuel. Make sure I get this right. 16, verse 1. 16, verse 1, 2 Samuel. And when David was a little past the top of the hill, behold, Ziba, there he is, the servant of Mephibosheth, met him with a couple of asses saddled. It's kind of important there. You don't think it is, but it is. And upon them two hundred loaves of bread, a hundred bunches of raisins, and a hundred and a hundred of summer fruits, and a bottle of wine. And the king said to Ziba, What meanest thou by thee? And Ziba said, The asses be for the king's household to ride on, and the bread and summer fruit for the young man to eat, the wine, the such as be faint in the wilderness may drink. And the king said, and where is thy master's son? And Zilba said unto the king, Behold, he abides at Jerusalem. For he said, Today, this is a lie, shall the house of Israel restore the kingdom to, of my father, his grandfather. Nothing wrong with that. Then said the king to Ziba, Now this is kind of harsh. This is without prayer. This is unwise by David. Behold, thine are all that pertain to Mithibosheth. Out of the mouth of the king, he just gave everything that was Mithibosheth to Ziba. David's had it. He's upset. He's running. He's on the run. He's about to be killed by his son. His whole family's in torment. He's leaving Jerusalem. And just take everything that's his, all right? He's going to be like that. Unthankful man. Ziba's yours. David got angry and he sinned. And Ziba said, I humbly beseech thee that I may find grace in thy sight, my lord, O king. So we're moving on. We're moving on. That was Mephibosheth's servant. Chapter 21. Verse 7. Now, what's happened here, and we'll verse 4 for the context. And the Gibeonites said unto him, David, We will not have silver nor gold of Saul, nor of his house. Neither for us shalt thou kill any man in Israel. He said, Well, what ye shall say, that will I do unto you. I have a hard time seeing you. And they answered the king that, that uh, devised, first time that word shows up, against us that we should be destroyed from remaining in any of the coast of Israel. So what Saul is trying to do is he tried to kill all the Gibeonites. He tried to get rid of them all. And God has sent a famine. 
And God has told David that famine is because of the Gibeonites and what Saul has done. And they say, let seven men of the sons be delivered unto us. And we will hang them up unto the Lord in Gibeon of Saul, whom the Lord did choose. And the king said, I will give them. I'll give you seven of the sons. But the king spared Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, because of the Lord's oath that was between them and between David and Jonathan, the son of Saul. So Mephibosheth has been protected by David. He's been protected by God. Here is the life of Mephibosheth. And how did he get lame? Chapter 4, verse 4. Chapter 4, verse 4, the Bible says he's lame. In chapter 4, verse 4, Mephibosheth. And Jonathan, Saul's son, had a son that was lame of his feet. Both of them. And he was five years old when tidings came of Saul and Jonathan out of Jezreel. They're dead. And his nurse took him up and fled. And it came to pass as she made haste to flee that he fell and became lame and his name was Mephibosheth so that's how he became lame the nurse dropped him five years old and both of his legs the impact he's unable to walk he's unable to get around and one day he's in a place called Lodabar probably someone taken care of he's got servants David says Mephibosheth come here because of your father, I am adopting you as one of my children. And you're going to sit at my table forever and eat and dine. And I will take care of you. And as far as your servant, Ziba, Ziba, he's going to still work for you. He's going to work your fields. But don't you need to worry. I'll take care of you. So David's on the run. He's running from Absalom. Ziba shows up. King, here's a bunch of asses. Here's some food, King. Here's some nourishment, King. Oh, King, I love you. Here. David in anger. Well, I've had it with Mephibosheth. It's your Ziba. Which he really had no authority to do it. Because then he just tell... Uh, the, the sons of uh, his sister there. Shall we take off uh, this guy's head? And David's like, I can't order that. I don't even know if Jerusalem has me anymore. I don't have that authority. But he can tell Ziba, hey, take it. So when we come back to verse 24 of chapter 19. Knowing more about Mephibosheth, the son of Saul, came down to meet the king. He's in Jerusalem. He's been where Absalom's been. And as far as what we read so far, Ziba said, Ha ha! My father's going to get the throne. It's my throne. And had neither dressed his feet. Now according to the scriptures that he's laying with his feet, he has not changed his bandages. He is not taking care of his feet. No one has ever addressed this man to help him but David. Nor trimmed his beard. You know, he didn't get trimmed up for the king. It was wild. Nor washed his clothes. He's stinking. He's been like a hermit while David's been gone. You know what that tells David when he shows up? According to what the lie that Ziba said, man, I thought you'd be all trimmed, ready to go, dressed in a royal. Look at you, Mephibosheth, you're a mess. You, first thing, man, you need a bath. Well, wait a minute. If he's in that condition, how is he saying he's going to serve? That's no way for a king. That's no way for a royal family to act. Something's wrong. We move on. 
from the day the king departed until the day he came again in peace, which is present right here in the story. David's back in Jerusalem. And it came to pass when he was come to Jerusalem to meet the king, that the king said unto him, Wherefore, when is not thou with me, Mephibosheth? Where were you? You were missing. And he answered, My lord, O king, my servant deceived me. Okay. For thy servant said, here we go, I will saddle me an ass. Mephibosheth? Yes, Eva? I'm going to go get you some asses. I'll take care of you. Wait right here. Ziba went and saddled asses and went and met the king and did not bring Mithibosheth. And the king says, well, where is Mithibosheth? Ah, he's happy. Ziba lied. I will saddle me an ass and I may ride thereon and go to the king. He didn't do that because thy servant is lame. I have... Mithibosheth can't do nothing without his legs. He needs to rely. And with David gone, with Ziba gone, he hasn't even had the bandages changed. No one has taken his clothes to wash him. He's been sitting lame until David came back. I am lame until Jesus Christ comes back for me. I have 1 John 1, 9. If I confess my sins, he's faithful and just to forgive me. But I'm still a sinner. Because thy servant is lame. And he has slandered thy servant unto my Lord again. Now he has no idea what he told David, but that must be the character of Ziba. That guy lied to you, David. Without David telling him nothing. David, I was supposed to be with you, but that guy lied to me. But my Lord the King is as an angel of God. Do therefore what is good in thine eyes. Do whatever. I'm not even worthy where I was. I had no right for you to call me and to be at your table. Whatever you do right now, let it please God. For all of my father's house were but dead men before my Lord the King. True, David could have wiped them all out. It's a conspiracy. Now, later on, we read in 21.7, at the respect of the Gidonites, David takes, I forget how many sons it were, and they hang him up for the revenge that Saul did to those family, but he spares Mephibosheth. Yet didst thou set thy servant among them that did eat at thy own table. Your military leaders, your own family, David, and you. I sat there with your family. And I'm not worthy. What right? Therefore have I to cry any more unto the king. And America's only, oh, we got rights. We got rights. Mithibosheth says to the king, hey, king, you can end it all right now. I may not sit at your table no more. I may go back to Lodabar. That'd be just fine with me. Thank you very much for taking care of me. Thank you for the opportunity for the meals that I did have with you. But that guy lied. And the king said unto him, Why speakest thou any more of thy matters? You asked him, David. I want to be choked up. Now he's getting Mephibosheth's side of the story, not the Zebas. And we got to realize when we're living and doing things in life, we need both sides of the story. And David's like, he's lived with Mephibosheth. Ziba's only been someone out in the fields. And the character that Mephibosheth has shown to David is, ooh, he's telling the truth now. I have said, thou and Ziba divide the land. The first time you said it. I'll restore everything that is Saul's to you, Mephibosheth. The second time, when he's on the run, Ziba, it's yours. Have it all. Now he makes another proclamation. You two, I, I'm tired of this bickering. 
Why is he tired of this bickering? He just had a big bickering with his own son. I'm tired of the land. I'm tired of this fighting. I'm tired of this civil war. Both of you, just divide it, will you? Leave me alone. <laughs> and Mithibosheth said unto the king, <laughs> he doesn't stop talking. Yea, let him take it. Let him take all. <laughs> For as much as my lord the king is come again in peace unto his own house. And then when we picked up later on in, in 2 Samuel, 21, there is Mephibosheth again with David. David's protecting Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth runs back and is able to stand before the king and sit before the king at his table again. He's protected by David. And we don't ever hear anything of Ziba again. David just got to the point, man, he's just frustrated. His mind is not clear. He's on the run. He's speaking hastily, as we all do. And then he gets the other side of the story. And he's like, you know, just both of you. But a little boy, five years old, hears of his, his, his family has been killed, his grandpa and his dad. And he runs off to some place where someone's got to take care of him. Because of the fault of his nurse, she dropped him. And one day the king's men come knocking on the door and say, Mephibosheth, the king wants to see you. This is the same king. This is the same man that his grandfather chased. This is the same one that his grandfather wanted to kill. We don't know if he knew about the friendship between Jonathan. Evidently he didn't know about the oath between David and Jonathan. And he stands before the king's presence, fall down, and he worships David as the king. And David says, Mephibosheth, because of your father, you are going to sit in my presence, I'm going to adopt you. Mephibosheth is overjoyed. He gets land back that he probably lost. His servant is set out in the fields to do the plowing, to do the manual labor. And when that opportunity comes, that servant Ziba lies to the king about Mephibosheth. And David, in his anger, says, you take it. Mephibosheth wants to be like that? You have it. David's enemy dies. David heads back to the kingdom, heads back to Jerusalem. He walks into Jerusalem. Here comes this man. He's filthy. He's vile. He's unclean. He may even made his feet even more infectious. That's a word. And he goes up to him and said, Well, Mithibosheth, where were you? Mithibosheth says, Hey, my, my servant lied. He said he was going to prepare. He said he was going to get me ready to meet you. And he never showed up. I sat in this place. Unclean. Untouched. And uncared for until you came back, David. And David's looking at this man. Maybe David took care of himself. Maybe David hired somebody. And he's looking at him. He's filthy. He's unclean. And maybe he soiled himself too. How's he going to get to where he needs to use the facility? Maybe he hasn't even eaten. His beard is all ratted and mangled. David takes one look at him and says, You know what? You're a mess. But I believe you. As far as that matter, is that piece of land? You, you two just fight it. I don't care. And Ms. Ibisha says, Let him have it. Zibia, Zibia, whatever his name is, he tells it, Oh, may the Lord the King bless me. May he may take care of me. Thank you very much. Mithibosheth is a type of Christian who's saved, who's been adopted by the Holy Spirit, by the finished work of Jesus Christ. And no matter what we do, David's never going to give us up. No matter how filthy we become, no matter how we can't take care of ourselves, David's going to come and say, well, let me take care of it again. And there'll be people out in the world, out in the fields. The field's a type of world, the Bible says. And they'll claim, oh, I'll take care of you. I'll, I'll love you. I'll, 
and they don't do nothing. All they do is lie. Now, guaranteed, Ziba will have to stand before David or Solomon or even God Almighty. But Mephibosheth, he'll get word when we, we study later. I'm after Saul's sons. I need some of Saul's sons to die to get rid of this famine. And he's wondering, is it going to be me? David says, here, no, no, you can't take Mephibosheth. Sorry. He's mine. Can you imagine that moment when Mephibosheth felt that moment when we read in chapter 21? No, nope, not Mephibosheth. That's mine. Can you imagine how he felt? Probably felt loved, cared for. David's never going to leave me. But oh, I remember that time I couldn't meet David. I, I wanted to go to David. But the world, the man, prevented me from seeing David. It's a remarkable story. We're going to end there.